everybody. Uh, welcome to a live uh, review here at Breaking the 180. Uh, and we should start off by saying Happy Thanksgiving. So happy, happy holidays uh, to set the tone for what we're going to talk about, which is... Thanksgiving. The... There will be no leftovers. <laughs> Very true. It's, so, it's yeah. the latest from uh, the uh, master of morbidity, uh, Eli Roth. The douchebag horror director, <laughs> Eli Roth. Um, and this is actually our second time recording this because, uh, as I found out, I've learned a lot about the shortcomings of uh, Instagram lately. Uh, frustrating, but now I'm the wiser. So Come on, guys. Uh, if you can post 30 minutes of content on Facebook, you can surely let us uh, post uh, something over... 10 or 15 minutes on Instagram. Or edit a comment. Or, ed or edit a comment, yes. You know how many embarrassed misspellings of mine are still floating around out there because I can't edit them? Uh, but, but let's jump into Thanksgiving. Yeah. This was, you know, for all the shit we've talked about Eli Roth in past episodes, this was actually a pleasant surprise. Uh, for those of you who are planning to see it this weekend, I imagine you are, you're all familiar with the original version of this concept, which was a fake B-movie trailer Roth shot, along with a few other directors, as the intermission of the B-movie revival Grindhouse by Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. You know, you had Planet Terror uh, and uh, with Death Proof as the two main movies. And in the middle, they hired these uh, other, you know, friends of theirs, directors like Rob Zombie, uh, to do fake B-movie trailers, and one of them was Thanksgiving uh, by Eli Roth, which, you know, it's it's a great thing to look for on YouTube. It's got that scratchy 80s, 70s look, and it's a made-up slasher uh, holiday movie. And 16 years later, uh, 16, 17 years later, Roth decides to turn it into a movie. More than just a pleasant surprise, I'm shocked how much... I enjoyed this. Yeah. <laughs> I, and we make fun of Eli Roth for good reason. I cannot stand his movies. And I was really expecting the worst. Uh, we got invited at very last minute at Dolby Labs, of all places. Out there in Burbank, where you gotta, if you don't have a car, you gotta walk a couple of miles to find sustenance. But, <laughs> but yeah. it's, uh, he was really fun. Yeah. You know, and I think people might be surprised that we're saying this, but I think it's really important to mention that when we go into movies, even if we bring in positive or, or negative expectations, like this case, we kind of figure out what the movie's trying to do. And then from there, how well does it fulfill that? It's uh, not what the movie is about, but how it is about it, as said by one of our mentors, Roger Ebert, many years ago. And this is, I mean, it's a B movie. Don't get me wrong, but it's a B movie with like a little bit of depth, like yeah. like like a little like a like a. If you take a shovel and you dig one hole in the ground, it's about that much of depth. <laughs> but it's it's fun. It actually it's got thought put into it, basically, like in the classic B movie uh, tradition. Well executed, yeah. and Dolby Labs means we saw this. You might not find a better theater in Los Angeles for sound. Oh yeah, yeah. the 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 quality of it is uh, just extraordinary, and it's funny to point out because, of course, this is not the kind of movie that you think about when you are pondering what kind of sound system you're going to watch it with. It's not Oppenheimer or or even Barbie or those kinds of movies. But it was still really nice to see it in the in those conditions because you get a sense of how Roth has grown as a filmmaker as well. His his uh, compositions are much uh, richer, if you can say that, uh, in this movie. Uh, uh, slightly more elegant. Uh, I actually watched Hostel a couple of days ago, and he always has known how to use the camera, but he used to have this more kind of jerky, in-your-face, gritty style. Uh, here, it looks more like a cross between a John Carpenter movie and a nineties teen slasher thing. Like I know what you did last summer. No, or one totally. Of those movies, now yeah. this isn't the most visually stunning movie, but the point we're making is it's extremely well put 
yes. together. They knew that the idea sounded stupid as hell, but they were like, no, let's let's commit to making this campy premise into something interesting. And it is. And it's funny. And it's it, first it's of all, it's funny. funny. It's genuinely funny. But also, yeah. I mean, of course, you you also have the classic kind of douchebag characters, but in a way that's more believable and relatable, like how Gen Z talks, how uh, the gun guy, who's actually very funny. <laughs> They're actual really, teens. You know yeah. what? They have a James Bond scene, a gearing up <laughs> scene in the movie. That's, that's yeah, funny. No, it it's... doesn't go on too long. But my, my thing when you talk about Eli Roth evolving, my question, and funny enough, it is a movie I've thought about a little bit. Um, is it because of his own choices or he had producers and editors who said, no, 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 man, I know you have crazy kills, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but but hold back a little bit. Don't, it, don't revel too much in the crazy things they're doing. It's a good question. Uh, I get the sense he he himself is trying to try new things as a director. Uh, in this movie, he plays a lot, too, with much better social commentary, um, which he's always tried to play around with. Hostel was kind of a slasher take on dumb Americans going abroad, and they don't really know anything about the countries they're going to, and everyone thinks of Amsterdam is just a, a, a sex and drug spot. Um, so he's poking fun at that a little more crudely. Here, he really is going for some funny, vicious satire about American consumerism and how we turn holidays into into spending sprees. And, well, you know. Black Friday in particular. Yes. <laughs> and the kind of juxtaposition of Thanksgiving when you're supposed to, like, not think about uh, late-stage capitalism at all. You're there to spend time with loved ones. But then, like, the next day, people literally turn into zombies. But but now how they've moved that back to Thanksgiving? You know, and funny enough, so, funny enough you mentioned that because I, I spoke with Roth a couple of days ago about this movie. Um, and I asked him, why, why now? Why make this movie now in this style? Because he's also not completely copying the look of his original trailer. He's not using the scratched film vintage look or anything. And he said that he had always wanted to turn it into a movie, but he wasn't really sure what the concept, what the theme would be, what the concept would be, until he saw these videos of rampaging Black Friday shoppers stomping on each other and running over people. And that's when it clicked in his mind. Okay, now I know what I want the movie to be about. Where your question about the producers and, and the collaborators comes in, yeah, that's a good question, I think, in regards to the the gore. Because one thing we want to emphasize is it is it is gory and funny, but it doesn't get too um uh over the top. It's not it's, it's not yeah. saw, right? Yeah, like, yeah not at all. Stuff not at happen, all. But it's almost like frame perfect editing where it cuts away. We're it's not, not, gonna it's give not away. even hostile. It's not even no, his, and, his own and, earlier. And here's work, the yeah. thing. We we don't want to give away any any of the kills because they're actually like quite fun. <laughs> yeah. But let's just say there's one that involves an oven <laughs> and once it clicked in my head that oh, he's gonna go for this, I thought, oh my god, if he shows us every little thing happening in real time, like he he will have lost all the gold, goodwill he's earned. <laughs> But no, you see a, a few shots of it happening, cuts away, and then the after effect. No, he's he he really keeps it stylish. He actually, it sounds funny, but he he keeps it classy, while at the same time classy making, for Eli Roth. Yes, and while at the same time making you squirm and and get uneasy in the way that these uh, what they used to call exploitation pictures uh, used to do, sure. where the the director knows what they're doing. Uh, it's but again, it's about how they they do it. If you show too much, the effect is lost. It's, it's like, the kind yeah. that see it in a big theater, and when the kills happen, you'll have the oh shit and yeah. oh my god, what the <laughs> fuck? Like that. I mean, it is it is yeah. the perfect thing to go see with people. And 
I don't yes. know. I was I was like so captivated. I was the guy. I was the sicko in our screening <laughs> that was doing that. I never thought that would happen. But going back to your point about the Black Friday, which is how the movie opens. Yes, yes. So it's not a spoiler. At no, all, no, no. Literally, it, it's it's how it opens. When you see what's going on, I thought, huh, that's when I, when I was like, okay, you, you hooked me. Let's see how this goes. And then the killer, their motivation for doing what they do, you're like, oh, okay, interesting. It's, again, it's interesting how it's not thoughtless and and it, time will tell what Roth's follow-up will be i know there's all this chatter about some video game adaptation he's been working on uh, that's right i uh, forgot about that but apparently there has been if you just scour online there's been some friction about that shoot so we don't really know and i asked him what do you got coming up next and his answer was i don't know that was literally his what, entire what an enlightened in individual <laughs> that was entirely his that was his entire answer to it but as far as his filmography goes, this one is a, is a win. I dare call it charming. It's a, it's it a charming. You know what? Off. The funny thing about it, unlike, so we saw, we did a double screening day. So we started with Thanksgiving and ended with the Marvels. The only time I've thought about the Marvels was when trying to <laughs> fix something on Instagram and two seconds ago. Yeah. I don't give a crap about it. It's just a corporate product. This I would go. I, I would go see again with friends. Oh yeah, if someone yeah, if someone invited uh, to go check this out say, tomorrow yeah. or this weekend, I, I yeah, I'd be totally down to give it another shot. Uh, what's you know next? what? Even even better at, at, a, at a place that serves alcohol. Yeah, uh, Alamo Draft Alamo House. Draft Alamo House. Draft House. We're looking for sponsors, guys. So we will happily recommend happily. the Alamo Draft House in downtown we, Los Angeles. Yes, <laughs> to go Chills see us? Thanksgiving. No, <laughs> like what? With that check what? though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but uh, we don't need money. We don't. Know. Come on. <laughs> we live off the grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 quite fun. And like I said, the kind of douchebag characters—that's kind of his staple. But you're kind of surprised because the focus is on teenagers and a few adults that are not unlikable, but just like embodies their age group, well, the Gen Z well, high schoolers. Well, you know? they they operate and feel like genuine kids. Uh, one critique I've always made about guilty pleasures like Riverdale on the CW is that as guilty of a pleasure as they are the characters don't necessarily always feel like actual 17 or 18 year olds well, they're what a 45 year old yeah playing a <laughs> playing imagine a, imagines a what a 18 year old but then you yeah. cast a 30 year old so yeah exactly. and this one i think the actors are early 20s but close enough and you know the way they react to situations it's like yeah probably we would do the same you know they're very they're very convincing and and but at the same time uh, roth being a, a a real connoisseur of this kind of movie knows how to nod at the same time at those classic teen archetypes of these movies you know think of whatever you know, jamie lee curtis and halloween and and uh or movies like friday the 13th he knows how to wink at that stuff without imitating. It still feels, even though we're praising all this stuff about it that's different from his usual uh, catalog of, of work, if you're an Eli Roth fan, if you're part of that that circle, <laughs> there's still plenty of Eli Roth in the movie. Like, you'll still enjoy oh, it. 100%. So this is, uh, this is, I would say this is a movie where if you didn't like Hostel, if you didn't like Green Inferno, if you didn't like hostile too and that's so stuff. me basically but, if you really yeah. cannot if you really think his movies are sickening <laughs> i i'm telling you this is a yeah. pleasant surprise yeah actually what we've what the the moment we walked out of our screening we said this actually feels within the same energy and spirit as violent night which was yes, the santa yes, claus yes. uh die hard movie from last year when we walked about it we were like this is like a stupid movie that's executed well yes uh and and it's not even saying stupid in a negative way it's more like okay like silly when yes. we say stupid it doesn't mean insult or intelligent like yeah. silly that's what i mean like fun stupid escapism not, like escapism. pure escapism like okay you know we're not here to 
talk about the Osage murders or something. Or, or but, I just I just saw um, the sacrifice. It's not the sacrifice, right? Oh Where no, you need no, to like yeah, no, no. <laughs> or, you sit with a tea at the window while it's raining and really just pick it apart no it that's yeah. not their aim and They're, you need to go see this i love the sacrifice but you gotta go see it rested <laughs> make sure that you actually got a good night's sleep this one i can picture someone after a long day of work going oh, you. to you yes yeah, going to peep this and all of a sudden you're just into it and you're just having well, a we good were, time I, I mean we had a coffee before we saw it but we walked out we were like dude this was like this really fun, fun. This like, is I'm a good of, one I've had funny experiences like that. This is a wacky comparison, but it's like the time I had to go see Teen Titans go to the movies. <laughs> it was that kind of thing where you walk in like, oh my what, am God. I, what am I about to watch? And 30 minutes into it, you're thinking, you know what? I'm I'm having a good time. I'm you not know ashamed what? of it. I'm the bad guys. We saw that last year. Guys. I was like, oh, DreamWorks. And you watch it like, oh, this is like an adult movie that winks at every other kind of heist or criminal it's movie. A, it's like a, and this is a nod at our ongoing series. The Bad Guys is literally a Michael Mann <laughs> DreamWorks family movie. It's true. Uh, yeah, it's not even, and Thanksgiving is kind of in that vein. If, if, if you don't like Hostel, but you like stuff, again, like Scream go go see it it's 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 a lot of fun and and one thing i'll add about the look of the movie and i not this is absolutely an endearing thing not a disparaging thing it the way it's shot in the composition in the lighting it looks like something that you could do in film school meaning mm. it's doable if you see this film mm. as a film student you should kind of be inspired in a way to be like okay we can like there we can make movies like this on a relatively low budget well and and that a low budget doesn't mean you you can't pull off uh efficient compositions and and good uh montages and and ex exciting jump cuts i know i know i know it sounds like that's we're talking about jean luc godard when we're actually talking about eli roth but that's that it's in terms of slasher b movies this is a good one. It's it's a good, charming, fun time. So go check it out this week. Save it for Thanksgiving week. Save it it's, for Black yeah. Friday. Just don't <laughs> yeah. go to Best Buy. Go to Thanks. Go go watch Thanksgiving. A nice AMC theater. Whatever. Sit back and, and enjoy. enjoy. It's 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 fun. It's let me one. let me just say you'll never see corn holders the same way. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 all we'll say about that. <laughs> and you know what? I almost forgot. We have to mention it. Patrick Dempsey. So good in this movie. Patrick Dempsey is fantastic in this film. I didn't even know he was in it. I mean either. I didn't even, you know, frankly as as a good of an actor as he is, um he's just one of those really good ones you sometimes forget about until you see them in something that really stands out like this one. Uh just before he got voted uh, or chosen as sexiest man in the world by People Magazine, uh, whatever that so, means yeah, for people. Um, but hey, but that's the there you go, Patrick Dempsey. Uh, sometimes you don't know where that comeback is going to come from, and in this movie, it's it's a memorable one. Um, and I guess the last thing we'll say about Thanksgiving, the most important thing to remember is no leftovers <laughs> definitely not in this one well i wouldn't even eat the leftovers from this movie if <laughs> uh and you'll see what we mean when you go check it out uh well everyone uh that's our review of thanksgiving it premieres this friday the 17th uh along with some some other good stuff the art houses are still showing some really good stuff that we recommend uh I quite enjoy the Hunger Games sequel, so so prequel. more on the prequel. Yes, oh my god, it's been a long. But day. I'm sure it's going to get a sequel. I'm sure it'll get a sequel. Prequel, very good. And stay tuned for um, more content we've got coming up as the year winds down. We're gonna we have another. Do we recommend uh, some art house films, uh, which will be an interesting discussion? Todd Heat. Haynes and Vim Benders. Yes, uh, Heat. I know we talk about it in almost everything we post, but it, we're it's, getting there. It, the, the, the influence of this movie i've been doing the deep dive into how it's influenced video games and it's it's yeah there's a lot oh, so yeah. watch out pretty much now till mid-january we're gonna have a lot of content coming because 
a lot's being released and it's the first real fall season since since the apocalypse and now that the strikes are over officially as always we express our solidarity with the artists that were fighting for uh their rights union strong union all, strong always uh and fighting for their livelihood uh but now that the strikes are over uh now the floodgates are about to open and i cannot wait to discuss the way cinema will never be the same after aquaman 2. <clears throat> uh, well i mean <laughs> I, yeah, I jest yeah. i jest but but so that's there we uh, go that's what's coming up remember to please comment uh below our videos like the video share it uh go to our socials please we are on Facebook and Instagram. I left uh, all the yes. links in, in the top on Instagram. So you'll see uh, Spotify, Apple, Pod, all, all that stuff, all the usuals. And uh, I don't know if I linked them here, but we also leave our letterboxed accounts under all our podcast episodes because oftentimes we'll write on films that we don't talk about. All talk the, about too many movies. Come too on, many you, movies, you, new ones, old ones. Know. All that stuff. Too much stuff to enjoy and watch. Indeed. Uh, so, Indeed. Um, and also rate us. Please remember to, to yes. rate us. Give us those star ratings because that always helps. And we hope uh, wherever you are. You're, have a good Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving. And hope you're watching some good stuff as well. Peace. Okay. What? Oh.